Hello everybody and welcome to another lesson and this time we'll be talking about a render settings. If you guys are interested in learning how to do procedural uh, texturing, I was planning to have this all as one video but after starting to record the procedural part of the pot I found that it was way too long and I'm going to have to do it as a separate video. But um, because we already have done so much work uh, I went ahead and did the table and the pot and now we can uh, move ahead and work on the render settings and the workflows around it. So in the render settings basically I went to the common uh, settings and set up all the common settings that I needed to set up. Basically the render uh, type, um, how to name the files, which camera to use and so on, that's for batch rendering, all of this stuff. So I'm just going to close that and move on. Alright, so in the render, the Arnold render attributes, currently I'm set up a specular 0, uh, transmission 0, uh, subsurface scatter at 0, and volume at 0. Um, camera AAs are set to 3, uh, basically giving me 9 samples. Uh, when the camera's uh, grabbing the rays uh, from the different lights, which is giving me a very low quality render. Um, basically, all I've done is because I've knocked these down to zero, uh, I'm not rendering this, the reflections and so on. I'm just rendering the important bits that I need for now. That's why we don't have kind of highlights on the leaves, we don't have transparency on the leaves even though I've added that in and uh, we just have some highlights but that's about it. Alright, so um, now that I've talked about you know the, the just basic settings to, to kind of do the basic materials just to get a good idea of how the materials work and so on, what um, my next step is to go into the AOVs and I'm going to use the AOVs um, to or the render passes uh, to get a very good idea of where I need more samples uh, and to do that it's very simple we're going to choose the diffuse and indirect diffuse and add them in then I want to go to uh, there's dirt, we're not interested in that, indirect, opacity, uh, screen, we want a subsurface and indirect subsurface, we want indirect and specular, and transmission and indirect transmission. Of course you can add more stuff, but these are more or less the default ones that we're going to use to diagnose uh, when things are going wrong. So how do we do that? I'm going to go to Window, Tools, and turn on Diagnostic. So first you have a camera, I got my AOVs, and I got my Diagnostic. So Diagnostic basically will show me the base, will show me occlusion if there is, it will show me the lighting, how the lighting set up. Um, and all of this is great, even the UVs I can check out like that. Um, but the problem with this is when I actually get to uh, checking out samples and see how things are being calculated, uh, I don't really have the method to there. So if I go now to diffuse, I'm canceling out everything but the diffuse. If I go to indirect diffuse, I can see how many samples the indirect diffuse is getting. So once the render is done, what I'll get is um, a, a good idea how many more samples I need to add to the diffuse to, uh, to get a better indirect or cleaner diffuse. All right. So we can use this very, very easily. So here's the spec, so I can see the specular. Uh, then we have transmission over there, which is currently there's nothing there and the subsurface which we only have on this uh, even though the leaf has it as well. Alright, so um, let's go back to 
beauty for now. And while this is thinking, uh, we could also go to system and over here, uh, there's a couple of cool options. Uh, let's see, it should be the here or here. No, sorry, it's under under the AOVs. If we push out um, uh, this little arrow over here, you'll see that there is a couple more options for the AOVs. Uh, legacy, we're not interested. We got the denoiser over here, so let's turn on the denoiser. So the denoiser will add another level to what's going on here, and you'll see RGBA denoise. And what the RGBA denoise will do is wherever it's noisy, it's going to try um, remove that noise um, kind of by force. So as you can see, it kind of fuzzes everything else. We get a nice smooth uh, solution. It's not very good. Now you have to wait for it to be done and it will add time to your renders and some artifacts. But um, the closer you get um, to a good result, or you could actually shave off some render time because you don't need a hundred percent perfect um, noise reduction because you can use the denoise to clean up the remaining let's say nine or eight percent of noise that's left so it really depends on how it's being calculated in the background so i'll just stop it and let it get to the end and i'll show you the okay so both renders are done um so what i want to show you is the difference so currently i have a render that has uh no, no uh, denoise and a render that does have denoise. And you can see some slight differences. Now, the reason that the denoise does have specular is because I, when I render this, I just told it to do the diffuse. But you can see the slight difference where the noise is. Uh, you, if you ever want to check. Um, count check between the differences. You can decide which one is A and which one is B, and then you can always scrub across and see the difference between the one that has denoise and the one that doesn't. So with the denoise, currently I'm losing a lot of detail, but it is cleaning out a lot of the background and uh, some of the floor here, which would be very granular, especially in these areas here. So as I'm going to push up the detail and the subsurface, you'll see that we are going to get a much better result. All right. So uh, at this stage, I'm going to stop the lesson here. And when we come back, now that we have all the ways to kind of check how the sampling is going, we are going to actually start uh, changing the render settings to get a better and better result as we go along. Continuing on from where we left off, um, I've now that we've gone through the AOVs and added them up as a diagnostic tool and turned on the denoiser, um, we can now uh, to start hashing out the quality of our renders. What we're going to do is start off with the most simple one, which is the diffuse. So I just finished rendering this, uh, this pass, and currently I have um, two samples uh, on the diffuse. Basically, I'm getting on diffuse. I'm getting 36 samples because this is times three, basically. Let's say times nine is two times nine, so it's 36. Um, that's the maximum amount of samples I'm getting for the diffuse. So if I get pretty close to this, you can see that in a lot of places it's pretty noisy, and we need to figure out why it's noisy. To do that, I can very easily just go to the diffuse and see in the diffuse itself, what's noisy and what's not. 
We can also go to the indirect diffuse and see how noisy the indirect diffuse is, separate from the diffuse. And the indirect diffuse itself is fairly noisy. We're also getting a, a little bit of speckling here, which is um, a bit of a problem, but that's coming from the reflection. So how do we fix this? Well, all we need to do is up the samples. So I'm just going to keep this image here so we can continue to diagnose um, the indirect diffuse. Uh, let's see, go to beauty. Uh, all right, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to up this, let's say, twice the amount. So it's now at four, that means I'm getting 144 more samples compared to the 36 samples I had before. I'm just going to rerun that render. It's going to be a lot slower, but at the end of it, it's going to be a lot smoother. So I'm going to pause the video here, and when we come back, the render should be done, and we can then test out and see the difference between the two. All right, so the render is done. Uh, it took a lot longer, of course. Uh, let's see how long it took. Da, da, da. Usually it says down here. I'm not sure why it didn't. Um, so if we look here, I'm getting a smoother result. If we go back to the indirect, and I will save that picture, and I will click on it and make that A, and make this one B. And I scrub between the two. You can actually see the difference between the amount of dirt or um, speck. Um, this is due to basically upping the resolution. Of course, this is slows down our render. Um, so now we have this uh, much better looking image. Um, I could also turn on the denoiser, and of course you will see that I'm getting a much cleaner option, but find it doesn't work as well. Um, we still have certain areas that are pretty noisy and unclean, uh, but all in all it's pretty good. All right, so I'm pretty happy with Four here probably went out up the camera the AA to like six uh, this will now go higher so I can move this down back to three so this is going to go down to 81 but if I make this now six you'll see that now it's going to be like 300 so it's, it's going to be more so uh, I'm going to just knock that back down to three for now all right so um, this is pretty clean now I'm just going to knock this to zero, and let's bring up the specular and make the specular, let's say, uh, two. So now we're getting um, the reflections. So I'm getting reflections, and the idea now is to check to see if the reflections are going to be clean. So I'm going to let this run, and when it's done, I'm going to stop my... Uh, restart the video and we can look at the result of this okay we're back so uh, my first pass of the specular is done uh, we can now see reflections in these uh, mirror balls uh, I'm actually uh, gonna just render out this section here in the next uh, turn we could also see some reflection on the ground here uh, it's uh, getting some specular highlights um, and some on my little ladybug over there. So I'm just going to take a picture of that just so it's saved. Uh, we can go now to the specular and you can actually see the specular. And for now, if I go in a little closer to the specular, you can see that the specular is pretty clean, even though uh, over here we're getting a little bit of extra. Um, it's a little harsh, the light that's being reflected. All right, so with that, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think it needs more. I'm going to go to the indirect specular. That's fine, too. It's not dirty. 
and the direct specular which is these highlights might be a little too strong but again this is stuff that you can fix uh, in um, in a software such as um, uh, uh, After Effects and so on. Uh, all right, so cool. We are moving along pretty nicely. So if I wanted to change the specular, uh, I just need to change it here. All right, transition will be next. So again, I'll, I'll just push that up to two. Uh, that's going to stop rendering. I'm going to remove the uh, specular just so this goes a little faster. And here too, I'll let it run. And when it's done, um, I'll have a look and see if there's any noise and if there's any uh, uh, behaviors that we don't like. Um, I don't see any reason why to continue to show again and again. You pretty much get the idea by now. Um, and that goes same for you know the subsurface. If I turn it on, Sunny, we getting all the subsurface. Um, what I'm going to show you next is basically I'm going to just up to the numbers I kind of chose before and hope for the best. Uh, I'm going to just turn up everything to 2. And the reason I'm turning it up to 2 is basically it's the default uh, state that we get from, um, from the uh, settings here. And I think this should be more than enough. I'll let it run. When it's done, I will move on and talk about uh, some of the lighting changes have done and then how we can um, make our renders go a little faster and fix some problems that we may have like uh, too strong a reflection or too strong a highlight or, oops, and you know maybe fireflies and so on and so on so um, we'll do that when I'm done rendering all right the render is done um, so as you can see, this is the final result. Um, what we're going to do now uh, in the next lesson is go over some of the settings to kind of enhance your uh, render and kind of clean it up some more. You can see that I've now I've got to a state where most of it is clean. Uh, the denoise is creating some artifacts in the dark areas. Um, I'm still not sure how to control that, but I'm going to show you how to control um, kind of um, how much sampling and when to cut off the sampling uh, when uh, Arnold is rendering. So, with that being said, I'll see you in the next uh, in the next uh, video. So. All right, welcome back. So um, I do apologize. I just ate something uh, really sweet, uh, so there might be some um, spittle sounds. <laughs> I hope I hope you uh, suffer through it. I do apologize. All right, so um, we basically put in the basic settings, like how many bounces we're gonna need. And the next thing I want to do is just go through some more. Some of the settings that you want to keep bear in mind when you are rendering, so you can keep down the render times and get the best result. I'm going to start off with the ray depth, and ray depth is very important for several reasons. One, it's going to decide how many times a ray is going to bounce within uh, within its uh, category. For example, how many times a ray is allowed to bounce and diffuse. So if I knock this up to two. I'm basically saying, uh, after two bounces, stop. Um, I'm basically telling it to, to die off. By default, it's set to one. Now, it doesn't mean that if the number here is going to um, make it less strong. All it means is that the, the calculation of the ray that is being shot out of the camera and traced back to the light and instead of going once and to the light, it's going to go one, two, and then to the light. That's basically what it's doing. So um, by upping the samples, you can get better um, better results on how things work. 
So where is this really important? Well, it's important for, let's say, um, if you have certain reflections, uh, within reflections, you do want to up the, the specular count. Uh, depends on how many times something bounces through. So let's say you have a glass, and the glass has uh, thickness to it. So a ray is going to hit the glass, go through and hit the other side, so that's twice, and then go through once more, hit the back end, that's three times, hit one more, that's four, and out. So that's basically what you want to do. So I tend to put this at four. Transmission, sorry, specular is a reflection. So reflection two is enough. Um, reflections really depends how many times you want the reflection to be bounced back. So if you've got two reflected objects, you want to see how many times something's reflected. Uh, transmission, eight is the default's fine. Volume, currently it's set to zero, but if I had like a, a fog, you want to probably knock this up to one. All right, I've kept this image so we can control the result of that later. Bear in mind that when you up these bounces, that's also going to up the render time. Currently at the current settings, uh, I don't know where the time for my render time has gone. I think I can turn this on somewhere here. Toolbar. Gamma control, view, uh, okay, never mind. Um, all right, the next thing I want to talk about is the advanced uh, or adaptive sampling. So adaptive sampling is basically a way to control how these samples are being calculated. So currently I have uh, settings of 3 at the AA, and it's, it's creating this calculation here. But if I turn on adaptive sampling, you can see things have changed a bit. When it's doing it's saying, okay, so the minimum amount that you have is 9, the maximum currently is 64, and that's because it's set to 8. Um, this changes, let's say if I made this 6, you will see that now the maximum that it's going to allow uh, a sample to bounce is 36 times. Now why would we want this? So if I go up to 6 and 6, it will be... Correct, but if I go to let's say eight, you see it's it stops at sixty-four samples, and we'll just maintain that. And the reason we want to do this um, is to basically, if I leave this at three, um, is let um, the software. Start off with the lowest count, but let it have the ability to go to a higher count if necessary. So it's going to think a little smarter about it. Adaptive threshold, um, it also depends on the number here. The higher you go, uh, it's going to clip the harsher lights, if I remember correctly. Uh, clamping, uh, clamping again, that's due to the way it's going to behave when it comes to um, fireflies. So that's when you get those little white spots. This is where you're going to go to um, fix it. Um, in the documentation, they actually give you examples on how to control it. Basically, I find that the default settings are pretty good until they're not. And then usually you can play around with these until um, go lower and you'll get a better result. Um, just uh, mess around with it, it will help. Uh, under the advanced settings, nothing much. Filters, okay, so filters are also important. It's basically the type of uh, calculation type. Uh, the default settings here are pretty good. Uh, it's just uh, different ways of calculating the rays. Um, the one that's here seems to work fine. System. System is very important for when we want to um, control our graphics card. In the latest version, uh, where it actually uses GPU, uh, you can actually control uh, the drivers and the GPU rendering. Uh, my card is pretty old, so it doesn't really support it. So it is what it is. Uh, then AOVs we talked about. I don't need to get into this too much. 
diagnoses will let you um, help will help you basically uh, ignore let's say bump maps displacements subdivisions and so on just to get a better idea of your render um, without going through these so this is if you just want to see so you probably turn all of this off and just leave textures and then shaders and then whatever you know just go through them one by one and see where things kind of slow down or break uh, windows information there's one thing I'm missing environment motion du -du -du -du. where was that hiding mm -hmm. I think it's hiding under the AOVs system ah there we go so under buckets buckets are very important it's basically the size of the little squares that it creates. By default, it's set to 64, but the smaller you go, uh, it will be more accurate. Uh, but it will slow down your uh, render times. Um, you could also decide like uh, how it's going to calculate. Is it going to do rows from the top or sp spiral from the middle or random? Um, it really depends. Uh, play around with this and see which one works best for you. Um, I find Spiral is fine. Uh, let's just try this one just uh, for shits and giggles. Um, and with that, I'm going to end this video. And that's basically the render settings. Uh, if I have anything else to add, I will probably do one more. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Please leave a comment below uh, if you have any suggestions or requests. Uh, or if something wasn't clear enough, and I'll be happy to revise the video or even make a new one. Um, if you are interested in how to do um, just procedural modeling to create the, the pot texture, for example, um, there should be an upload pretty soon for that one. And uh, good luck, and thank you for watching.